Today we're unboxing a printer that's big, but I think probably it's too big. I don't know, let's find out. So here we have the Anycubic Cobra 3 Max. I've been pretty excited to play around with this printer and today is the day. We're gonna print huge. So previously I owned a couple of the original Cobra Maxes. I actually had two of them and they were pretty good for that generation of printer. But now we have access to a direct drive large format, high speed printer, boasting a giant build volume of 420 by 420 by 500 millimeters. And it's about freaking time because I ordered this in mid-January. It's mid-April. So today we're gonna go over the unboxing experience with this machine after we fix one common issue. Then I'll show you what it took to assemble this huge behemoth. From there we'll talk about setup a tiny bit. And then finally I'll dive into a couple of the prints I've been able to run off before telling you what I really think Think about this machine. Oh yeah, did I mention that it's multicolor? It's multicolor. So before we get started with anything, we need to address a giant issue that this printer has. So if you're anything like me and you got a hold of one of these machines, likely you're having the same issue that me and a lot of other people are having. Something's just wrong with the Z offset and bed leveling. But this is what fixed it for me. So let's rewind a little bit. After I had the machine unboxed, put together, and I was ready to begin printing something, I searched around for a while for some models to start out with. And after looking through several pages of models, I landed on this UPS van. Now at first I was gonna print it as big as the bed would allow, but that would take literal days and like a handful of spools of filament. I just wasn't quite ready for that on my first print. So I scaled the thing down to a more manageable and appropriate size, and I prepared the thing to print. Now immediately I learned two things about this printer. First of all, this machine takes so long to prepare each print. I mean, it does have a heated bed, and when you're talking about a thing that's that big, I suppose it makes sense that it would take a while for that to fully heat soak properly, so I'm not gonna hold it against it. Like, this is a giant printer. But the problem I had was once it was done preparing and it finally began printing, the Z offset was not correct. So even though the machine did like a bed leveling thing and its calibrations before the print, the Z offset still wasn't correct once the print began. So even after the bed leveling and stuff, it was off and I had to manually adjust it. Now I did this while the print was going so I would have the value set for next time. That way I wouldn't have to do it when I started the next print. But when I stopped the print and ran it again, the exact same thing happened. So that was when I learned the next thing about this printer. The Z offset does not save. So if you want to manually adjust something on the fly for whatever reason, even though I don't think you should have to, if you wanted to, it's not going to save to your next print. So in this case, I just modified it on the fly again to make sure the print was going to start correctly, and we just let the sucker go. So I'll talk about the results of that print a little bit later, but right now I want to focus on the problem with the bed leveling and the solution that I found that actually worked. So it sounds like this is a pretty common issue with these machines, and if this Reddit thread is anything to go off of, everybody's got this problem, Anycubic doesn't have a solution for it, we're all kind of out of luck. So being that it's on a Reddit thread, it's got to be like 100% accurate. Luckily, in this fully accurate Reddit thread, I also found this hero who came up with the solution. And you know what? Not only did their solution work, but it was super simple. So I guess it turns out these bearings on the Z-axis lead screws are often not tight when they ship. I don't know if it's a quality control thing or if they just come loose in shipping, but for whatever reason, they're not as tight as they need to be. So I snugged them down and you know what? That actually fixed this issue, like 100%. That was all it took. You guys, I don't remember the last time I've come up against a problem this annoying and had a solution this simple work this well. Especially not on the first suggestion from the internet. We need to enjoy this. So if this is you or somebody you know, please let them know because this is huge. I was ready to write this printer off completely and tell you guys how terrible it was just because of this one problem. But now I don't have to, and you know what? I actually like the machine. Moving on, here it is, the box. And also this box that showed up a few days later. And also this other box that showed up a few days earlier. Super weird logistics happening here, but at least it all arrived in one piece. Actually, fun fact about that, this box showed up at the same time that my H2D showed up, except the H2D was super broken, and this one wasn't. But this unboxing was actually a little bit different than the ones we've been doing on the channel lately. Recently, we've had a lot of the Zero Assembly fully enclosed Core XY box 
printers to unbox. Now this printer, to the contrary, actually requires a reasonable amount of setup and assembly. But the main pieces are the base, the Z-axis and gantry, tool head, and some various accessories. So for starters, we'll line up the Z-axis gantry piece with the base and install the required fasteners to get the two main pieces hooked together. But before we can do that, we need to take them apart from each other because these plates have them fastened together physically for shipping purposes to make sure you don't get a broken printer because that would suck. <laughs> With these plates removed and the two pieces installed together, we could look at installing these support rods. So these two chunky support braces are actually threaded tie rods, and they're there to keep everything nice and rigid when this machine's printing at high speeds. Like even the bolts that thread in are super chunky. So once you get the left one on the left side and the right one on the right side, and you adjust the ends by threading them in or out so they line up with the holes, we could snug these suckers down and move on to the tool head. Now this piece is held on with four screws, two of which have these slots that help locate the whole assembly, while the other two go into these holes here to actually tie everything together so it's nice and rigid. And then we can move on to the accessories. These are pieces like the tool head power cable, which is just a USB-C cable that threads in with a couple of screws to keep it nice and tight. Also this cool touch screen that sits on the side of the machine and actually plugs directly into the base. That's right, no fragile ribbon cables here. You like that? And of course, your assortment of Bowden tubes and stuff. Now, when we order the combo, you actually get an additional box that comes with everything that you need to convert your standard setup into a multicolor setup. So I crack that sucker open to get it going. This is just a simple matter of changing a couple of pieces of the hardware on the tool head to allow for the filament cutter to operate properly and for four Bowden tubes to be accommodated instead of just one. So after I installed those four tubes and cleaned them up a little bit with these little management clips, I plugged in the Ace and prepared to power this thing on for the first time. If you want more information on the Ace Pro or any Cubix multicolor system in general, you can check out the Cobra S1 review that we did recently, as well as the Cobra 3 Pro. Cobra Pro, Cobra 3 Pro, that other bed slinger Cobra machine that we reviewed. So now this is supposed to be the part where I move into a sponsor or some kind of ad space, but this video is a little bit different. Now since we're not a huge channel that gets sent every brand new printer for free, we actually have to spend our own money on 90% of the machines that come through the door here. That's why you see ads on our videos. That's why we have sponsors that we collaborate with. When FlexiSpot hit us up asking if they wanted to partner on something, I said, yeah, absolutely. I actually used their stuff already, so it seemed like a safe bet. But more importantly, this printer came to mind when I was talking to him because this thing's huge and I didn't know where I was going to put it. It's kind of hard to capture on camera, but it's not very easy to find a home for a printer of this size, especially when you add the ace next to it that has to be on that side of it because of the cables and stuff it's a pretty big footprint that you need to accommodate. Now I'm constantly changing around my workspace around here because it's kind of a revolving door of new machines coming and going. And on top of stashing printers everywhere, we need space for working on packing up Etsy orders or repairing machines as they break and things like that. So previously I bought a FlexiSpot desk for my closet because it's nice to be able to work on stuff up here if I need to get really close to like fix something or if I'm packing up Etsy orders. But also I can move the thing down and put a print printer on there and not have it wobble a whole bunch because it's not like 20 feet up in the air. So that's why it was lucky that FlexiSpot reached out and they offered to send me this L desk. There's tons of workspace available on it so I can get this whole printer out, unbox it like you're seeing in this video, and leave it set up here while I test it. Not to mention the convenience of being able to choose the height that I want it at and push one button to set it from maximum height to minimum height. Now I opted for a white on white setup in this case, but you can choose from different colors for your legs or you can get completely different tops too. But beyond that, there's also different sizes you can choose from, so surely there will be something available that'll suit your space perfectly. Moving forward, I think I'm going to move my H2D out here as well and have both of the printers sitting on this desk. Now that's a super heavy machine, luckily this desk is rated for like 220 pounds. So between the H2D and the Cobra Max, we're still not even maxing the sucker out. As I've been using this big Cobra Max on this FlexiSpot desk, I've been pretty impressed with how stable the thing is, and that bed is huge and it's slinging it back and forth. So I'm totally impressed. Check out FlexiSpot. I've got a link in the description. I'm already a customer and totally approve of you looking into their products. So let's talk about printing, because that's what we're here to do, boys and girls. First of all, there's a few things to note here. When slicing for this machine, 
prepare to wait. Now I spoke about my feelings towards the Anycubic Next slicer when we did the Cobra S1 video. Shockingly, my feelings haven't changed. I'm not a huge fan of this slicer. That notwithstanding, these slices take a while. And of course it's going to take a while because like that's a ton of layers if you're maxing out the build volume. So that's not all the slicer's fault, but it being on that slicer makes it so much longer. Another thing to take note of, this is a high speed printer, but it's still like, any cubic slow, if that makes sense. But of course, this was never going to be a super fast machine anyway, because again, it's a bed slinger. The thing's giant, so that's a lot of mass to move back and forth. You're not going to be whipping that thing like crazy. All that's to say, prepare to measure your prints in days instead of hours, because it's going to take a while. Along the same lines, the other thing you can expect from this machine is wild filament consumption. I know, it's a big machine, big filament consumption. But until you start slicing things, it's actually kind of difficult to wrap your head around this. So for example, the standard size nacho that we print off here takes about 49 grams of filament. If we double that and scale it to 200%, now it takes 293 grams of filament. You see how that growth kind of happens? Imagine maxing out this build plate. Lots of filament consumption. With that in mind, landing on a model that I could print on this thing without spending a week printing it was a little bit of a chore. But I managed to come up with one that I could print in less than one kilogram of filament. And that is this super cool model of the Halo 3 map Valhalla, baby. This thing's sweet. One of the reasons that I wanted this print to be less than a kilogram was because I wanted to use this spool of rainbow shiny PLA from Cheeto Tech. And if I had multiple spools, then my gradient was gonna be all goofed up. Now using a gradient PLA for a model like this has a really cool effect as you move up in the layers and different pieces of the map are colored differently. And I'm happy to report that the printer performed pretty well. This is a big model, it took several days and everything turned out really good. It did pretty well replicating these small details. There aren't any like layer shifts or anything like that. That. Although if you look at the flat sides on the back, you can see an issue that we had with the Cobra S1 as well as the Creality High that we recently reviewed. There's quite a bit of ghosting artifacts due to the vibrations of the machine, which again is a bit of a bummer to see because the machine did vibration compensation during this print. So it should have been dialed in. Now moving on to that UPS van that we started out with. Uh, this thing turned out awful, but this is the print that I had to adjust the Z offset on the fly for. So that could be part of the reason why this side of it turned out pretty poorly. And in fairness, the whole rest of the model actually looks pretty good. Now, after I fixed the Z offset issue, I wanted to test out the machine a little bit more with something safer than a giant model. And I wanted to check out the multicolor system a little bit. So of course I loaded up some nachos and ran off four of these puppies. I used some super old maroon filament that I had laying around as well as some Overture chocolates and then this like skin tone filament that I had sitting around too. And I'm happy to report that they turned out super well. Like I was impressed, they turned out very good. Thank goodness, because I really want to like this machine. So having a successful print after the uncertainty with the bed leveling stuff was a huge, huge relief. Honestly guys, beyond that, I haven't had enough time to print anything else. I wanna do things like run a huge plate of tiny nachos or max out the build plate with a giant multicolor nacho, for example. But those are prints that take like five days and this video would never come out. So for the sake of getting something in front of you, these are my initial results for an initial review and first impression of the machine. I'm gonna be doing a lot more printing on this machine to validate it a little bit more and see how much I like it in the longer term. But let me know what you would want to see me print on this machine while I'm doing that and maybe I'll do it but with all that in mind what do I think of this machine at this moment in time well it's pretty good from a hardware standpoint I'm pretty impressed linear rails and metal componentry all around that's a good thing the external camera that the thing comes with is kind of junky and it's exactly what you find on the other Cobra bed slinger machine that we reviewed it's kind of a DIY print your own adventure situation and I guess that's fine but that's just an observation. Maybe I'm nitpicking, I don't know. Something that this machine does share as a weakness with the Cobra S1 though is the part cooling. And this is super evident when you look at any overhangs. They're just not as quality as you might find on some other machines with better part cooling. And really, I think that's the main critique that I have of this machine. Otherwise, I gotta say, I'm pretty impressed with the results that I found here. Even with the thing being a gigantic bed slinging printer, these models are turning out super smooth and consistent. So I'm happy to recommend this to anybody that's kind of on the fence about this, but keep in mind, 
I've only had a couple of weeks with it. I've only been able to print more than 100 hours, but it's only been a handful of prints because they all take like a billion hours. Keep that in mind. I don't have very much experience with the machine and I'll be doing a lot more printing with it. And thanks again to FlexiSpot for partnering with us on this video. It's been super nice to have a place to actually put this giant machine. Check out FlexiSpot stuff. Look at the link in the description. Bye.